Hi everyone, uh, good day, uh, actually a very good day because there is a lot of clarity through the MCC notification. Sorry about the delay, both uh, we had a 10 minute delay uh, to start and then uh, and sorry about the delay from MCC too, uh, they should have clarified it long before. So we'll be looking at the entire clarity on the notifications that have been published. We have been looking at a lot of uh, queries, we had mentioned around 8 queries that require clarity. Almost every query has been clarified except for one minor part which will also intimate. But as of now, uh, all the queries that we have asked, we believe that everything has been clarified by MCC from an All India perspective. So we'll be looking at All India Round 1, relate, uh, All India Round 2 results have been published. Related to the results and the joining, resignation and post uh, joining uh, implications in terms of All India Round 3 uh, uh, eligibility, 4 features, stray uh, eligibility, etc. That is what has been clarified and we'll be looking at that. So yesterday they post put, it, put up a notification which clearly mentioned that uh, resignation is possible for All India Round 2, uh, All India Round 1 seat retain candidates in All India Round 2, those who have retained their All India Round 1 joint seat in All India Round 2, resignation possibility with for, without forfeiture of security deposit and with forfeiture of security deposit uh, that was intimated. Uh, then they put up a notification today with these clauses, we will go through each clause in detail and we will also clarify what these clauses clarify basically what were the doubts that we had and how these clarify uh, how these clauses clarify the doubts uh, one note before even we, before we start interpretations from now on when mcc notifies and for state r2 eligibility state r2 to r3 eligibility all india r3 eligibility the intentions of mcc and the states might be something what the candidates prefer might be based on what that benefits them so there might be an interpretation related issue, uh, we also are not experts in terms of a new rule that is coming up or in terms of checking with states on uh, what they have decided. Odisha for example has in their notification itself put up certain clauses saying that we are not aware, we are waiting for clarity from MCC. So in those scenarios there will be a lot of interpretations in the groups. Only thing is be very clear about the interpretations and intentions of MCC based on uh, discussions are based on what clauses exist, not based on the interpretations which uh, each candidate might have and that might be different. What MCC intends to do, what state intends to do, only MCC can tell you through notifications which we waited till to, for which we waited till today and states can tell you through notifications or official communications or in case you have inside information verify that. Okay, So only those are correct, what we say even take it with a pinch of salt, Okay, that, that is the first thing. So this, these notifications, this notification came up around 10.30 today. So what we will be looking at is, uh, today we will be looking at each notification. Notification 1 is the notification which came up yesterday. If you are an, if you have retained your All India Round 1 joint seat in All India Round 2, notification 1 is relevant. Then we will move on to notification 2 as we move forward. So uh, first uh, we will look at notification 1 uh, uh, to start with. Can you pause for a second? So notification 1, uh, notification 1 is relevant only for those candidates who are All India Round 1, who joined their All India Round 1 seat, opted for upgradation, then did not uh, get an upgraded seat and retained their All India Round 1 seat. So what do they have? Their All India Round 1 joint seat. They don't need to do anything as far as MCC is concerned, no new allotment letter etc. But in case they are willing to resign that seat, they are not interested in that seat. First thing that is mentioned is you can resign your seat till 6 p.m. of 2nd September which is till tomorrow 6 p.m. you will be able to resign the seat without forfeiture of security deposit. So basically what this means is you can resign without forfeiture of security deposit. After resignation since it is no forfeiture of security deposit you can attend All India Round 3 with same registration. This is what it means. Okay, so you can go into All India Round 3 with same registration because you are not forfeiting your security deposit. Fill choices, only difference is you will not have an All India, the All India Round 1 seat which you could have continued with, that you will not have in hand. If you resign, but you have an option to carry over your All India Round 1 seat to All India Round 3 which is clear, we will come to that from the second notification. So this is one thing, in case you are absolutely sure you don't want your All India Round 1 seat, retain seat and you want the, uh, you are planning to participate in All India Round 3, no other state relevance, nothing etc. Then very clearly go ahead and resign because you are not interested 100% in your All India Round 1 seat. Before uh, September uh, 2nd, 6 p.m. if you resign, you will get your security deposit back 
uh, basically it will not be forfeited so you can go into all india round 3 you save that part second still i am undecided i want to take a decision after two days i have my all india round 1 joint seat which i retained but i want to take a decision in after two days basically after september 2nd i may have my state uh, possibility or i have other possibilities then can i resign yes it is very clearly mentioned over here that you can resign after september 2nd 6 pm it will be considered as part of round 2 which means you have a round 1 joint seat which you are retaining in round which you retained in round 2 this is considered as a round 2 joint okay so basically assume that you are allotted a round 2 seat and you have joined it that is the consideration i am allotted a round 2 seat uh, after this timeline if you still continue with your r1 joint and retain the seat you did not get an upgradation in round 2 then it is considered as a round 2 joint seat a round 2 joint seat resignation is allowed okay that is what this clarifies and you can resign with security deposit for feature till what timeline it is not mentioned today but you can resign at least for a few days till they notify the last date that should be possible as of now assume at least till september 5, 5, 5, uh, 5 pm you will be able to resign beyond that if a timeline is provided they will extend so you have an option to keep your options open on the seat till september 5, 5 pm so that i mean you can go in and get your certificates at least till that timeline beyond that a resignation deadline has not been provided it is exit with four feature of since it is a round two joint seat you are resigning it that is exit with four feature in case you are participating in all india round three because it is exit with four feature you will freshly register repay the amount okay the security deposit forfeited amount and you will fill choices that is possible we will come to those rules later so okay so resignation is clearly possible till september 5th we are saying we are taking a leap of faith because mcc does it every year this timeline it should be possible but beyond that a timeline has to be prescribed by mcc till the point in time they say possibly there will be possible in one or two days we maybe we will be able to get that timeline too on the resignation so here there is a confusion so basically there are some candidates who are getting confused exit with four feature of fees first it says four feature of security deposit then it says exist exit with four feature of fees does it mean if i join or if my round one retain seat let us say it is a deemed seat and i resign that deemed seat after two days does it mean four feature of fees paid to the deemed institute first year fee i have paid will they forfeit everything no it does not mean that at least mcc does not mean that you will have to check with your deemed institute they are supposed to give you back the amount you can check that even now if i resign as per mcc's rules they are supposed to give you back the amount because the seat goes into the next round there is no four feature uh, the seat obviously goes into the next round and they will get some other candidate who will fill the seat and join the seat so as per process they are supposed to give what does this fees mention this is again the security deposit plus registration fee that is what is mentioned over here so here if you want a reference you can take this reference under, under the counseling scheme the first thing itself says payment of fees which is a registration and security deposit that is what at least mcc refers to here your problem with deem take it with deem they will refund the, they should refund the amount if not take it up with mcc they are supposed to refund your first year fee in case you resign as per the guidelines given by mcc so this is the first notice most of you uh, would be uh, in the second category where you have got upgraded because there are very few candidates a small set who has retained the seats you are under the second category then second category second notification covers all those who want to upgrade including those whom we already discussed this set of candidates if you want to uh, move on to all india round 3 what is the option is what it says uh, majorly for upgradation and there is also a minor reference to ineligibility etc we will go through everything one by one so that all clears or all rules are clarified explanation notification 2 the title says mcc of dghs has provided benefit of upgradation from round 2 to round 3 the supreme court related confusion case related confusion mcc going for uh, ratification or approval etc as of now this provides clarity that mcc is clear that it is providing upgradation any problem they take it up later they are providing upgradation from round 2 to round 3 mohfw we already mentioned it is basis ministries approval that they have gone they've gone ahead with that so it clears that round 2 to round 3 upgradation is possible some were even doubting this but even though it was mentioned multiple times in the prospectus they were uh, the supreme court order 
which came up recently created some confusion. So basically, this is very much possible. There is no confusion is as of now. So uh, 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 upgradation is possible. At least that is mentioned. Second, point number one, round one candidates who have given willingness as yes during a reporting of round one can fill choices for upgradation during round three. So we had a confusion. I am a round one joint candidate. This is for round one joint candidates who have joined their seat. Pre exit others, it was not relevant. Round one joint candidate. I gave for upgradation. Where? At the R1 Institute. I did not get upgraded. So we had this as the first point in the process that require clarity. I did not get upgraded. Where will I provide my willingness for upgradation from R1 to R3? So first thing that give, uh, uh, this provides clarity is R1 candidates can retain candidates. Whoever has retained their seats can get upgraded in R3. And what is their willingness? Automatically, whatever willingness they gave during round one reporting, that can be taken and they will fill choices for round three. So fundamentally, what this means is R1 retained candidates, retained R1 seat in round two, they can go to round three holding their R1 seats. So basically, if you don't resign at all after two days, continue with the R1 seat, you can go to R3. How do you fill choices? Automatically, you will be able to fill choices because you already provided willingness in round one during reporting. That is why uh, the retained seat happened. So you will be uh, able to fill choices for round three directly. It just says fill choices for upgradation in round three. Okay. So automatic willingness. It just says fill choices for upgradation in round three. This also tells us that you just fill choices. No four feature of security deposit. You just directly go fill choices. Nothing is mentioned. We'll come to that later too. So basically, if you are an RN, R1 candidate, the biggest query, uh, last day, uh, yesterday maybe 50 calls, This uh, today morning another 40-50 calls we would have received, R1 retain seat can be taken into round 3 and directly you fill choices. Don't need to register again, same registration. Okay. After this session, we will conduct for, uh, another session for every scenario on uh, what will be the registration, security deposit for feature for every scenario. After this session, uh, we will be conducting that. Second point, free exit candidates can also participate in round 3. There was some unnecessary uh, confusion created by uh, uh, some clauses in MCC, not candidates. It is actually the clauses in MCC which created a confusion. So, uh, this confusion was created saying, once I do a free exit in R1, I will not be eligible for stray R3, etc. So, this has been clarified first for R3. Free exit candidates can participate in R3. This is very clear. So, basically, free exit in R1, you did not get a seat in R2, or you got a seat in R2 and you are planning to upgrade. All these you can participate in R1. Free exit in R3, R1 does not impact anything. Like we already mentioned, free exit is almost equivalent to no seat allotted, no impact in any further rounds. R3, you can participate very well cleared. Next one. Freshly allotted candidates of round two. Okay, so whenever they fre freshly allotted, uh, again people will think about uh, double upgradation, etc. This also includes up upgraded candidates. Basically, they are also allotted a new seat. So freshly allotted candidates in uh, round two may fill choices for upgradation in round three by giving willingness as yes. Okay, so a candidate who is freshly allotted can give willingness as yes. Where will you give this? You go to the round two institute for joining. That is when upgradation is relevant. Only when you are holding a seat, the term upgradation itself is relevant. So you join and at the time of joining, we have always suggested opt for upgradation, right? Provide willingness for upgradation. And then in your uh, intra, get your intra MCC admission letter, which says willingness for upgradation. Yes, get this done. And once you provide your willingness for upgradation in the round two allotted college, do you need to enter this anywhere? No, you will go to the round two allotted college provide willingness for upgradation, the institute will enter in intra MCC portal, give you the admission letter, which says this candidate has for willingness for upgradation is yes, that is enough for upgrading from R2 to R3. You hold your joint seat in R2 and then you can move on to R3, very clear, willingness for upgradation and will be able to fill fresh choices, fill choices for round 3. No security deposit for feature is mentioned. We will also come to this at, towards the end where it is absolutely clear that security deposit for feature is not there. If security deposit for feature is there, 
MCC would explicitly have mentioned. We also agree that if they have not explicitly mentioned that no security deposit port feature is there, but this provides us information that you can fill choices for R3 directly without anything. There is nothing else that is required as per at least this clause. Cl what all it clarifies? No four feature of security deposit. Willingness should be yes for filling choices in R3. Don't miss this out. Even if you are confused about it or even if you are 99% sure, go ahead and opt for upgradation. Okay. Don't miss this out. After opting for upgradation, if you don't fill choices in round 3, you will still retain your round 2 seat. We already had candidates who missed out not opting for upgradation or, and are out of the counselling now because they wanted to resign that seat. Even if you resign, there might not be a possibility if you don't provide a willingness for upgradation as no to participate in All India Round 3. So, always provide willingness for upgradation and yes at the time of joining and decide later during Round 3 whether you want to join. If you don't fill choices, obviously your Round 2 seat will be retained. If willingness is no, can't fill choices for All India Round 3, be very clear. If your willingness is no, in entire All India Counseling, round 2 seat might be the last seat. We are not aware of one particular scenario of resignation, but better to always opt for willingness as yes and then take up any case. If willingness is no, can't resign All India the seat after All India round 2 resignation deadline. Note that once you join an All India round 2 seat, the resignation deadline will be provided by MCC, correct? This is not there. Resignation is possible, but it is not there. Once the resignation deadline is provided, beyond that, All India Round 3 starts. Okay. This candidate, if they provide willingness for upgradation as no here, and does not resign, what, even if resigned, they cannot participate in All India Round 3. Does it? Uh, we, uh, that clause, we, we are a two clause. But if they do not resign, then All India Round 3 starting they will hold their All India Round 2 seat, cannot fill fresh choices. Therefore, All India Round 2 seat will be allotted, correct? The same seat will be retained, very clear. That is why they provided willingness for upgradation. No strike, very clear. And this All India Round 2 seat can, cannot be resigned after All India Round 3, which means you will be considered as an All India Round 3 joined candidate. Whoever provided willingness has no and did not resign by the deadline. You are an All India Count 3 joint candidate at the end of All India Round 3. That is your final seat across the entire counselling if you, if you go beyond this resignation deadline. So, be very clear about it. At least you can keep your options open and then take a call later. So, we sincerely suggest everybody to will, go for willingness for upgradation and yes and then not fill choices then get into these complications. If you do not understand the complication too, trust us and give willingness for yes at R2 Joint Institute. Okay. Next. So, round 1 and round 2 candidates. Who are these? Round 1, retained and continuing. Basically, they refer to round 1 seats. You are holding round 1 seats now. and You are continuing. Round 2, join candidates. If you are satisfied with your allotted seats, let us say you are satisfied with your allotted seats. You do not want upgradation. You just do not fill fresh choices in round 3. This is basically those who give willingness. You just do not give fresh choices in round 3, you will retain your round 2 seat. This is a very clear thing. That is what we have been saying. Give willingness. And then this is automatic willingness. Round 1 is automatic willingness, right? It will be taken from your round 1. Everybody who retained the round 1 seat will be able to fill choices. Round 2, if you provided willingness as yes, still if you want to retain the same seat, round 1 or round 2 seat, you may not fill fresh choices. That is a possibility that is given. Always opt for upgradation and take a call before All India Round 3. That is what we will suggest. And here. Round 2 candidates who do not get upgraded in Round 3. Okay. So, basically, who are all Round 2 join candidates? Those candidates who have a seat, anybody who has a seat, both AR1 retained, a, R, 2, joint. Both of them are continuing into round 3. Okay. When you continue into round 3, A, at the time of A, R, 3, you either have an A, R, 2 retain seat or an A, R, 2 joint seat in hand. When you continue into All India round 3 and you do not get upgraded, what will happen? This seat will be retained again, whatever seat is there. 
resignation will not be possible. They will have to continue studying in the round 2 seat. What will this be taken as? AAR3 joint seat. So basically, when you go into All India round 3 with the seat in hand and it gets retained, the same seat gets retained, whether it is All India round 1 retained seat or All India round 2 seat, joint seat that you take into All India round 3, if it gets retained, end of counselling for you. Because you cannot resign, you will continue to study. Once you take All India round 2 in seat 3, you cannot resign the seat if not upgraded. So there is no possibility of attending the counselling. So this also means if you take a seat into All India round 3, when you enter All India round 3, you are taking having a seat in hand, you are either allotted a new seat, correct? This case there might be a different possibility or you retain the same seat. No resignation possible. You are out of stray. Anybody who gets into All India round 3 with the seat in hand, no stray for them very clearly. Because either you are allotted or you retain. In both cases, retain you cannot resign. Allotted. Uh, this is considered as AAR3 joint. Allotted a new seat. You are ineligible for stray already as per process. It will come in the next, po uh, next point. So, that uh, it will be. Uh, uh, so, basically, it means if you hold a seat and go into All India round 3, you are out of stray. All India round 3 is your final thing as far as All India is concerned. And over here, if you look at the next clause, candidates of round 3 who do not report on the allotted seat will not be able to participate in stray round. It is very clear that in case you are allotted in All India round 3, whether you are go, getting into a seat, we already said getting into All India round 3 with a seat, automatically stray ineligibility is defined. Once you get into All India round 3, after that last date of All India round 2 resignation deadline, you are out of stray if you still hold a seat. And uh, in case you do not have a seat, get into All India round 3 and allot it. Whether you report or not report, if you do not report to, you will not be able to participate in stray. Already we know that candidates who have joined in round 3 are not eligible for stray. That we already know. AAR3 joined candidates ineligible to resign. This is a very clear clause mentioned. So, taken both to taking both together, once you are allotted into All India round 3, you are ineligible for stray. So, who will be eligible for stray round? Oh, the stray ineligibility very we will look at clearly so that we will be clear about who is eligible. One AAR2 joined, this also include AAR1 retained and taken, took the seat into AAR3, either an AAR1 retained seat or AAR2 joint seat. Absolutely not eligible for stray if you are going in with an AA seat into AAR3. Uh, continuing with that. AAR3 allotted and joined. Obviously, they cannot resign. They are not eligible. AAR3 allotted and did not join. Clause here, they are not eligible. Candidates who have joined in round 3 of state. Note, every year, joined and resigned does not matter. You cannot resign your state round 3 seat after looking at the state stray vacancies. That will create a problem, legal issues. Every year, candidates have been taken, taking that up. So, if you joined a round 3 of state, at the end of round 3, your status is joined in your state. Uh, the clause is mentioned over here. You can just check in the prospectus. It will be filtered and weeded out. So, they are ineligible for AAQ stray. We also come to uh, clarity on stray where no ineligibility is mentioned just because of All India round 1 free exit. There are two queries, right? All India round 1 free exit. Will I, will, I, will I be ineligible for stray? No such clause. These alone matter at the end, whatever we have mentioned. Second, All India round 2, I did not join, resigned, joined and resigned or exited with forfeiture in any way, went into All India round 3 with no seat in hand. All India round 3, I was eligible, went into All India round 3 with no seat in hand. Prior to that, I might have free exited, exited with forfeiture, does not matter. I went into All India round 3 with no seat in hand, not allotted in All India round 3 and do not hold a seat in state. I have not joined a state round 3 seat. I am not holding a state round 3 joint seat. Then you are eligible for stray. This part prior to All India round 3 is, does not matter as long as you do not come into All India round 3 with a seat in hand. So, eligibility for stray exists. Stray is very stringent. You know that if you are allotted in stray uh, and you do not join, you will be ineligible for the next uh, entire examination. So, obviously, anybody goes, goes into stray with the stringent clauses. Hope the, those clauses were exited earlier too. But 
with the stringent clauses those candidates stray everybody who is allotted almost 95 percent join the seats so there is no indecision there so this is pretty much clear we will include one last thing whether r2 resigned candidates can participate in r3 so some of you some of them we are uh, preempting this because some will come up with a query uh, these queries and whether upgraded candidates can go to where is it only freshly allotted is mentioned upgraded can go or not upgraded and freshly allotted mean the same wherever it is referred to it is all the same second whether r2 resign candidates can participate in r3 uh, where is it mentioned it is very clearly mentioned you can go to this round three uh, round three start have resigned from round two need to fill uh, fill fresh choices with fresh payment offers this refers to both a r1 resigned after 2nd September till whatever timeline resignation is allowed. So they are considered as R2 joint, we said, right? So any R2 joint candidate who resigned, including this AAR1 resignation after 2nd September, till the timeline prescribed, timeline has not been prescribed by MCC. If you uh, if you resign within that timeline, full payment of fees. Fees is what? Security deposit plus registration fee. That is the fee, like we mentioned. So, this is pretty clear. R2 resigned can also participate in round 3 with fresh registration, security deposit for future after joining if you resign. R2 exited with for future, we already know anyways they can participate in round 3. So, uh, uh, that is pretty much I think uh, here. Okay. <laughs> so, exited with for future without joining can register again. It is also mentioned. So, we just missed that but luckily it is available. So, that is pretty much we have. This is a very detailed thing we believe everything has been covered except now the clarity needs to be there only on uh, we, were, we are extremely happy that MCC covered these two. Uh, we are thankful for them one on this the pre exit part which was confusing candidates and uh, second on the part of okay this where round three uh, after taking a seat into all India round two and retaining the same seat, taking a seat after all India round 2 into all India round 3 and retaining the seat you cannot resign. That is a clause that we have mentioned to many candidates who called saying that don't take the risk MCC will come up with this but uh, uh, good that they have come up with this now itself without confusing candidates because decisions are taken now. As far as MCC is concerned and all India to all India is concerned we believe that almost all the rules are clear, uh, very minimal uh, rules are not clear. Uh, almost everything we think is clear. If there is anything else, you can also comment. We will just check and let you know what is uh, uh, in that scenario. We have covered that. State R2s. We are still a lot confused. We promised, but uh, uh, we were waiting for this because now resignation is allowed. We can at least be a little confident in going ahead and telling what might happen in state R2. Uh, so finally, we will look at any comments or uh, queries. Uh, and we are also absolutely happy that uh, we had clarified this most of this and you were expecting this and uh, it has happened exactly as we had discussed together in, uh, in the groups etc. So 